So cutting and welding metal used to be really, really hard. And Xtool is trying to blow away the barrier to entry with a brand new product. So this is the metal fab. This video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions and I wanna do three different things. One is go through the machine itself and talk about some of the really cool features that it has. And second is going to be how the software can interact with the machine and with Xtool, they normally do software very, very well. And third, I wanna talk about how this machine compares to the current alternatives and what it says about the future of Xtool. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about what this machine is. And I'm just gonna be going through their product page. At the time of this recording, it's still pre-released with the Kickstarter coming, so there's probably a lot more details to come, but as of right now, this is the best that I can know. Uh, but you can see right here that we have our machine. And it's basically two different machines. And the laser welder is right here on the left. And this is basically a laser version of a welder. Um, so in this case, this is like a MIG welder from Lincoln Electric. Uh, and specifically with this one, this is something like you pick up and take to your project because you have a welding gun with a trigger on it. So then I pull the trigger uh, and then things get really bright and really hot. Now you might have seen people talk about plasma cutters, especially one that you would put into a CNC gantry and like cut out pieces of metal. There's bigger versions of that that has like a dedicated plasma head attached to the CNC, um, but there are a lot of them that will take a dedicated plasma cutter and you actually attach the gun to the CNC gantry and then still using all the power from the welder or the plasma cutter, you then have access to the CNC capabilities. And that is basically what this product is from Xtool, except you take away like a traditional welder or plasma gun and you insert a fiber laser. And that is why I have this right here. So this is the Xtool F1 Ultra, their current uh, only fiber laser, like true fiber laser source. And so this is a 20 watt version. And the metal fab is actually gonna come in two different versions. Uh, one's going to be a 1200 watt laser or a 800 watt laser. And again, this is a 20 watt laser. So you might see a lot of people refer to these lower wattage machines as engravers. And typically with fiber, these are set up for fiber engraving. Um, that is why the work area is so small. Because if you want to cut metal, you need much higher wattages. That is why we're getting into the 800 and 1200 watt range. Now, huge industrial machines can go up from there. Uh, typically they start around like 2K or 2000 watts, uh, up to three, five, and so on and so on. And the price really goes up with it as well. Now, if we're looking at this video, you can kind of see this two-in-one functionality uh, that they're advertising. So you can see the gun right there, they have attached to the CNC, and now it is like cutting out uh, as it's attached to a fully enclosed CNC. And then once those pieces are cut out, uh, they're then taking it and then actually welding them together. So you're able to cut and weld with the same power source. Um, you're just like connecting it to different things. So now a few things with the actual laser welder itself. We are in basically the same wavelength as this guy. So they're advertising they're using coherent laser chips. I don't think I have any machines that use those for the manufacturers for the actual laser diodes, um, but that's a pretty trusted and reputable brand. So it's nice to see that they're using that. But you can see with the video, you can use it handheld, which is super nice for welding. Um, there is a wire feeder attachment. I don't think that comes stock with the 800 watt version, but it does with the 1200 watt. And I was a little confused at first at like why you would need that because I was thinking of it strictly as a laser cutter, but just like with a traditional welder, uh, this case, like with a MIG welder, if I'm welding, two pieces together. This is the actual material that's getting melted down and like fuses into the other two pieces. So there is a wire spool that comes through that gives you that additional material when you're just doing welding. Now, another commonality this is also gonna have with traditional welders is you're going to need shielding gas. So if we're coming from like any of the other products in the X-Tool line, you don't need a shielding gas. Uh, the, the P2 as well as the S1 um, will have like a compressor on the back that's shooting out gas that kind of is acting in the same way. But with the metal fab, you'll need like proper shielding gas. They'll either be like argon or nitrogen. So that's gonna be like an additional tank that you're gonna have to rent and then fill it up as needed. So in my case, I actually do have a tank of argon and then I use when I'm trying to uh, MIG weld aluminum, not super great at it. Just know that's something in addition that you'll need to think through when you're looking at this machine. All right, now let's talk about the uh, CNC aspect of it. You can see it running right here. It looks like an industrialized version of the Xtool P2. They do advertise that it has dual cameras and we'll get into the impact 
of those dual cameras here in a minute. Uh, but just looking at the size of it, uh, it is advertised as basically a two foot by two foot bed, which is a really nice work area. They are saying there is a pass through pretty much on the complete front. So even if your material is like longer than two feet, you can still put it in. And they're given a maximum Z axis thickness of about 90 millimeters or 3.5 inches. And speaking of thickness, they're saying that the 1200 watt machine can cut through 10 millimeter material, which is about 0.4 inches. And the lower wattage can do about 0.3 inches or eight millimeters. Now that will be very dependent on the type of material that you're using. Uh, but just know this is not for like super thick stuff, but when you're working with metal, it's a lot different than wood. It's much stronger at much thinner thicknesses. And on the CC specifically, they're advertising a pretty substantial exhaust fan, 2,800 RPMs. There's gonna be lots of fumes and metal dust and fibers that are getting kicked up. So ventilation is going to be definitely key, even more so than like a traditional CO2 machine. Now the pros and cons of a laser versus like a plasma cutter slash a welder, uh, there are definitely a few. On the pro side for the laser, uh, the big thing is going to be the amount of detail that you can do. So the beam size itself is a laser. And so it is much, much, much smaller. So you're gonna get more intricate, cleaner cuts. And, and then especially with welding, you don't heat up as much of the material. Um, so if you're like welding two pieces of metal together, depending on how you're doing it, you're gonna get warping with the metal. So a lot of times you have to take that into account. You have to like tack it in different places. The laser is gonna allow you not to have to worry about that as much. It definitely will still get hot, um, but it's gonna be a lot more compressed spot. Now they don't advertise this, but uh, because it is a laser, it technically could engrave. I actually don't know what it means when you crank that wattage way up, but it is potentially an option where with like a plasma welder and cutter, you're not, you're just blasting through all of the material. Now the pros for a machine like this typically is going to be cost. This has been around for a lot longer and the price point of like plasma cutters have come down a good, good bit, especially compared to the laser alternative. And again, we're gonna talk about price here at the very end. And normally with lasers, um, you're able to drive those faster uh, than you can with the plasma alternative. But again, that's gonna be super dependent on like the type that you're doing, like the thickness and the type of material that you're using it with. But with the Metal Fab, X-Tool is advertising a uh, max speed of 400 millimeters per second, which if we wanna compare that to the X-Tool P2, uh, I think that is around 600 millimeters per second, where like really top end CO2 machines, you're in like the 1,000 to 1,200 millimeter per second range. But again, totally different use case. Uh, cutting is a lot, lot different than engraving material. Now the second big category I wanna cover is software. Because if you've seen any of my reviews of X-Tool to other products, the software is usually the number one reason I recommend their machines. Pound for pound, spec for spec, you can buy machines um, that have more impressive stats. But pretty much no other manufacturer has built software like Xtool in the like full integration within the entire system. And it looks like they are definitely doing that with the Metal Fab as well. So bringing over what they've done with the Xtool F1, I don't have this plugged in, uh, but this is a touchscreen uh, interface where you like you can run jobs, you can go through different settings with the F1. And you see from the videos, they basically have a touchscreen doing pretty much the same thing that I believe is directly on the like welder cutter unit, uh, probably on the top. Uh, and this is handy too, uh, because in the quick screen grab that we got, you have like material settings for welding, cleaning and cutting. So that's stuff you can like access directly from the machine. Uh, because something I do know from not being super great at MIG welding, it takes a while to dial in the right settings, depending on the material, depending on the thickness, depending on the environment, depending on the shielding gas. There's a lot of super nasty welds I've done uh, until I started to get it dialed in. So just like they have all of those settings inside of the software, if you wanna like engrave or cut out a piece of wood, you're gonna have that database built directly into the machine itself. Which brings us to like, how do you interact with the machine when it's in the CNC form? Because you aren't just like clicking cut and then like using it like a lightsaber and cutting things out. You need to tell the machine what you're cutting out and where it's gonna go. Which actually when I was looking at some other laser CNCs, that was a common question a lot of people had was like, how do you interact with the software? I have this design, how do I get it into the software? It seems super confusing. That process is something Xtool has definitely nailed. Now, now this obviously isn't a review of the machine. Uh, I'll do that once I have one here. Uh, but looking at some of the mockups that they have of the software and knowing how the software works with the other 
machines. I feel pretty confident saying it's going to be pretty easy to get up and running. And the, one of the key ways that are doing that is with their dual camera system. And this looks basically the exact same type of design they have in the Xtool P2, where you have a camera in the machine body itself. And then you have a camera on the laser head, or like in this case, the carrying enclosure for uh, the gun, where you can get a more precise reading. So inside of the software, you can see what you're about to cut out. And that's nice because you'll be able to lay out your design on your material. And then a feature they're bringing in is going to be nesting um, your parts onto your existing material. And this is gonna be even more valuable for metal where that material is a lot more costly. And then a lot of times the stuff you're cutting out is gonna be smaller than like wood or acrylic. And you can like auto nest it to the existing material. So it's not just optimizing the design, um, but if you have like holes and things already cut out, um, it knows that and it's able to place it around it. Just that step is great. And that's not really something you can do in other software easily, but the way Xtool already does it uh, works pretty, pretty well. So it's gonna be nice to see how they do it with the metal fab. Now, another feature that I'm not totally sure if they're using the uh, camera systems, but they're saying they have capacitive sensors. I'm kind of in that laser head assembly to where it's able to tell the distance between the laser head to where the laser's coming out and then the material. And it can make real time adjustments on the fly. And this is different than what Xtool already implements where they basically let you set up a grid of points and then it can like measure the material before you run it and then it like knows when to adjust it. But that's like all hard coded um, into it when you hit go. This seems like it's on the fly, um, which is handy if you have like warped material. But again, coming back to the fact that metal will warp as you like cut more into it, your material is definitely gonna shift as it's doing its cutting operation. And this is gonna help you get around those shifts and still get a nice finished part. Now, a couple other software specific features that they are doing, and these are things that happen before the cut starts, um, is uh, one is gonna be obstacle avoidance. Uh, now they're not using that capacitive sensor. They can just tell like if you have a circle part and then when you cut it out, it might like pop up and not completely fall out. Um, so it knows to avoid that when it's calculating uh, the pass. And same thing with uh, what they're calling smart flow, uh, which is basically like optimizing um, the cut. So if you're doing like squares in this example, it isn't, isn't just like a square over and over again, cutting like all the top lines, all the bottom lines, all the sides at once. So you're not having to worry about all the acceleration and deceleration that you normally have to do with a square. And the last software specific feature they're advertising is called uh, the Vibe Free Cut. These names are hilarious. But basically this is like the same process that uh, newer 3D printers do, which try to like counteract uh, the vibrations and the motion from the system itself to where you'll get like a really clean print, or in this case, a really nice clean cut. So like more math and magic that's going into the toolpath planning. But all those new features aside, you'll still have the power of Xtool Creative Space. You'll be able to do your designs directly inside of it, whether you're creating them yourself or you can just like import your own vectors as well. And then if it's like other machines, you'll have the full material database and then you can send it to the machine uh, and it should connect wirelessly if it's like everything else. And then you hit go. So if software is like your main concern, uh, I would encourage you to jump into the current Xtool Creative Space. I think you can like even jump into it as a demo, even if you don't have a machine to kind of see how it works. It really is nice and come a long way in the past few years. All right, and now for the most interesting part, uh, at least at the time of this recording, this is March 17th, and they are holding the price. So we don't actually know how much this thing is going to cost. I'm pretty sure within the week, uh, you guys actually will have pricing information. But even if you're watching this video after the price is out, I do want to talk about how they're comparing this machine to the competition, to, where, to basically where you're getting a laser welder and then a CNC cutter. In their case, they're using like price is from five to 20,000 on the laser welder and then 20 to 30 and up on the CNC cutter. So the price point for this is definitely gonna be more on the industrial side of things, uh, read expensive. Currently their most expensive machine, I think is this, um, or the Xtool P2S, they hover around $4,000. But if I had to guess, especially since they've given us like a few different prices to kind of benchmark off of, um, I'm guessing we're gonna be in the like $15,000 range. Uh, and then what I don't know is uh, if you could buy these individually. So you definitely will be able to get either a 1200 or 800 watt option, but I don't know if you can buy that separate from the CNC itself, because I could totally see this being a really nice upgrade path for folks. And actually I forgot about one machine that is in a current Kickstarter, uh, that is their apparel printer, uh, which is like a DTF printer. And it looks like uh, like their full bundle is gonna be around uh, 8,000 with an MSRP at about $9,000. And I would bet the metal fab is going to be even higher 
higher than that. But again, we're talking about just strict wattages. At 20 watts, this is 4,000. At 1,200 watts, we're probably more in the $15,000 range. And if you look around at some of the competition, there really isn't a lot, not as a separate machine that you can attach to it. So they really are kind of bridging the gap from more of the DIY hobbyist maker into like the full business to more of like the full business, you're cutting out metal parts. This is kind of a really nice step in between. And looking at the stats of their apparel printer, uh, a little bit more of what Xtool is pushing into. Which brings me to what do I think this says about Xtool? Um, it's self as a company. And the biggest thing is going back to the CNC, that looks a lot like an industrial CO2 laser cutter. Uh, you could basically imagine that enclosure, maybe like elongate it out and put a high wattage CO2 or even RF tube on the back. And then you have a laser cutter and that is a product they do not currently have in their line. Uh, you just have the desktop P2, but I could totally see a bigger machine coming from Xtool, especially as they're moving more into the higher end business space. Price point above 10,000 bucks. I know this is a brand new product and for a lot of you and for me, this is a brand new use case. So, so you probably have questions. If you do, let me know down in the comments. I'll do my best uh, to get the answer directly from Xtool if I don't know it. And I do definitely plan on doing a follow-up video and doing like an official review of this machine once it comes in. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.